So, so let's let's uh, talk about uh, Nigeria, which uh, your understanding of Nigeria is very, very in depth. I mean, it was a delight speaking with you the last time. Let's, let's talk about uh, which form of democracy is probably better for Nigeria. Is it the parliamentary system or the presidential system, in your opinion? It is not my opinion. It is the, the, the a practical reality of constitutional governance, what the features are between the parliamentary and the executive presidential system. Nigeria secured its independence on the federal constitutional governance based on parliamentary system. That system provides that political parties will present their manifestos. That is the promise they are making to the people and the people will, will make their choice. The choice they make at the end of the election because each member elected will be elected in his own delimited constituency. If the number of people elected on a political party is more than the others, then the party with the highest number of those who are elected will form government. They, on their own, will now decide who will be the first among equals called the prime minister. The beauty of that is that the, part, the head of government, who is the prime minister, is a legislature. And he sits down with other parliamentarians, his colleagues, maybe on a weekly basis or as the case might warrant. So if there's anything happening in any constituency, the member representing that constituency will be free to bring such matter up in the parliament. And the prime minister will be put to test to respond to whatever might be the agitation of such a member in that regard. So it makes parliamentary system of government responsible to the people and his colleagues in the parliament and to the to, to the various constituents. It makes the government again to be responsive to the yearning and the aspirations of the people. It is given in, in parliamentary system that when a government, the party in government, becomes unpopular, a vote of confidence can be raised in the parliament. When a vote of confidence is raised and votes are counted, if the government in power, the party in power, in power is defeated, so the new the, the other party with the majority becomes the, the new government instantly. But in the executive presidential system, these are the the situations. First of all, it is extremely prohibitive to run. Why? The head of the government must campaign around the entire country, no matter the size. Whereas in the parliamentary system, the, the one, even if you do, is, is already the shadow prime minister, we only have to contest a campaign in his own uh, constituency. He win his own election. And if his colleagues all over the country won theirs also, and they are in majority, then he becomes the prime minister. But for the presidential one, he must campaign throughout the country. He must win election throughout the whole country. Or substantial part. In some places, they talk about two-thirds. In, in some places, like in the American system, it is not uh, first to pass 
post. It is not the majority vote that makes you president in America. You can have the majority of votes in America. It is the, those who are elected to the House of Representatives from the different states who will now serve as the colleg collegiate. If they are more in number eh, from a particular, a, particular, a particular party, even though not having the majority. Why did Nigeria now switch to a presidential system? Okay. But I, I regret to tell you. But this is the fact, unimpeachable fact, that Nigeria did not decide to switch to the presidential system democratically. The military imposed it on Nigeria. Mm. When the military captured Nigeria on January 15, 1966, ordinarily, once there's a military insurrection, the first casualty is the existing constitution. They are abrogated and sub, 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 uh, uh, um, uh, supplanted the existing constitution and substituted it with decrease one to nine. Where they said they have taken over power. They suspended the constitution except those ones which they decided uh, to retain. And decrease one to nine virtually centralized and unitarized Nigeria since January 15, 1996. And that is what we are having till today. So, when Nigeria has campaigned vigorously, for a, 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 a return to, civ to civilian government, to democracy. Because Gawan reneged the promise to go in 1976, he was toppled. And when he was toppled, Murtala knew the faults that Nigeria were, were really, uh, 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 the complaints they were having very strongly against Gawan. Because that Gawan was not willing to hand over power again to civilians. So, in his first, before two weeks of his ascension to power, he announced a program of return to democracy. He, he just invited 50 Nigerians. No, no, they were not democratically elected. He, dictatorially, eh, militarily, invited those people. Called 50, they call it 50, 50 wise men. But Chief Obafemi Awolo delivered distinguished leader, nationalists, declined to serve in that committee. It was aided by the late chief F.R.A. Williams. But the uh, inaugural speech, in the, uh, in the inaugural speech of Mohammed, uh, Mutala Mohammed, he gave them the green light of what the military was expecting from them. That they should fashion out a government that should be strong, at the center, and that uh, a government that will be able to hold somebody accountable. They were enamored with the American executive presidential system. And so, you are, you know, when the military uh, invite people in that manner they will give them so many facilities so they see them as star, themselves as stars so they, are, they, had not, they had no other thing to do but to walk to the answer of what the military wanted now the reason behind this is equally this and it's fundamental 
the military runs an organogram institutionally, which is that information uh, is passed from top to bottom. The commander in chief dictates to the lower rung of the ladder. At the pain of death, he disobey the commander in chief. The presidential system of government, executive presidential system of government, has something similar to that, except for the fact that in the American system, because of the historical background of the formation of North America, the institutional check and balance established by that constitution had been very effective. That is the Congress, the House of Rep Representatives and the Senate. They, they under um, what, what, what you call Article 2 of the American uh, Constitution, the Congress really has very strong effective power and it had always served as a check and balance on the over office where the president resides until the recent times when the what i regard as the 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 the, the, the most um uh, on, on, on fit person that has ever emerged in, the, in that office now has come to come and devalue. That's why Americans can say to people all over the world that uh, they, they, they constitute the beacon of democracy eh? okay. globally. Yes, sir. So that was the beginning of how Nigeria finds itself running presidential. a presidential system. But then two things are critical in this. America to today remain the biggest economy. So America can afford an executive presidential system because it has money. But in the Nigeria setting, look at the level of poverty in our land. And we say we are running an executive presidential system. Look at the amount of money that Nigeria is spending on recurrent expenditure. We are spending virtually between 70 to 80 percent of our total national earning on recurrent, from which the salaries, allowances of these political, political operators constitute a great percentage eh, of, of that sum of money. So it is not a kind of system that is suitable for the Nigeria setting. It is prohibitive to run. And then, because it is an executive presidential system, the president has nothing to do with the uh, 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 legislative arm. The only mandatory one is when he lays his budget annually. That's when he inter interacts with the, the, with the uh, uh, le le legislature. So many a times, what is happening in many parts of the country will not be known to him, even though the legislature may, may, may raise it in the parliament, they can raise their motion, they can move a motion and pass it from the two, two uh, houses, green and red. It's not a law yet until it is signed into law by the president. So that's why it is irresponsive and very irresponsible eh, to the constituent mostly. So, so that, that tells why it has failed uh, in Nigeria. That, that, that the institutions are weak. Uh, totally. Because you see, uh, and unfortunately, because I, I, I dare say this without missing any word. And I say this with all due sense of responsibility. Having been a party, a political party apparatchik in the Second Republic, 
Assistant Director of Organization of the Unity Party of Nigeria. If you ask those who are senior to you, they will tell you that was the best run political party. You don't have political parties in Nigeria today. Strict to censo. What you have is political contest platform. So, the because since Babangida politics, the entire thing had been so monetized and commercialized, the formation of, of SDP and NRC were just the way they form parasitals. Eh? And that is really what had uh, been outstretched till today. Uh, when they write manifestos or constitutions, you will see the evidence in what, what has happened since this so-called 21 years of uh, a civilian government that they don't mean it. It doesn't mean, mean, mean anything to them. I'm not sure they, they look at what, the, the, uh, the, what is contained in their, in their document. Otherwise, President Buhari and his minders ought to, to have remembered that in their manifesto it is contained that if you give them, if you voted them into office, they will return Nigeria to a federal constitutional governance. Eh? It was just about two, two, two years, uh, uh, nine years ago or, or so, that when, they were, when the campaign was very strong, then they raised up a, a so, uh, uh, an air refire committee, which I regard as, after, as an afterthought. And after that committee had submitted his, his, his report, eh? You, you see, no, no, nobody had, had anything, anything about it. So, that is to say, to, to tell you that what we've had since 21 years ago had been civilian government, not democracy. Um, popular will ought to drive the activity of a democratic government. That is not so today. Okay, just before we, we, we finally, sir, mm. speaking on the way forward, as we look at uh, the system of governance that we operate, what would you advocate that, as a nation, we revert to or we get to practice for us to see the dividends of democracy, for us to see that, you know, the common man, uh, or for us to probably even go back and have the Nigeria that we've all dreamed of? Okay. L let me lay it uh, down again clearly, once again. Nigeria secured its independence on a federal constitutional arrangement. Federalism presupposes, because this is an heterogeneous society made up of different nationalities with their different culture, tradition, language, religion, artifacts, folklore, mores, morals, and the likes. In a federal constitutional arrangement, all these differences have free reign. But the component unity we meet at the center, the center is not the boss of the component unit. And that was not what, that was not what we had in the First Republic.